Hello, this is Matt with the UNH Career Development Center presenting a quick tutorial on writing an effective cover letter. The cover letter is the companion document to your resume. It is very important, important enough that you should think of resume cover letter as one word. When someone asks for your resume, you give them a cover letter as well. Whereas your resume is the more formal document that lists your background, your skills, places you've worked, places you volunteered, your education, the cover letter is a bit more of the informal document that allows you to speak directly to the employer. The letter will highlight your specific skill sets that you have for the job in which you are applying. It also expands on your resume, focusing more on what you can do for the company, showing them your story, how you can impact that company by being in that job. In the end, a well-written, well-constructed cover letter guides an employer through your resume, answers their questions that they have about you, and gets them excited to interview you and that's the whole point. So let's take a look at a sample cover letter and we'll go through each section to see how it's done and how it's done right. At the top is your name heading where you cut and paste from your resume. So this will include your contact information and um, phone number and email and how they can contact you for an interview. As we move down next you'll see there's the date and then the contact information of whomever you are sending the letter to and then we open with dear Mr. or Mrs. whomever. We generally want to avoid generic openings like dear sir or madam or dear human resources officer as much as you possibly can. You're trying to figure out who you are sending this to and so you want to do some research up front and then send the letter directly to that person. So let's look at the opening paragraph. This opening paragraph as you can see we have uh, highlighted here is brief to the point and it focuses on your objective. Why is the person reading your cover letter and your resume right now? So the opening has the, the basic information of how you found this position and what you are applying for. So don't beat around the bush. If your opening is boring or begins to read like your long autobiography, the employer will stop reading right then and there. So here we want to say in the interest of exploring a position or I learned about your position through a friend, uh, Mr. or Mrs. whomever referred me to your uh, opening or I saw your posting online, you essentially want to tell them right up front, very quick, to the point, why they're reading your resume, what you're applying for, and then they can move on to the bigger and better stuff that's below. The next paragraph is all about your skills for the job you just said you wanted in the opening paragraph. This is very important. You need to show you have the skills and the experiences for the role that you're applying for. This section should then highlight exactly these qualifications. Be careful here to not simply regurgitate your resume. You don't need to list every place you've worked and every title that you've held and every supervisor you worked for. That basically, most of that information is on your resume. Here, we want to focus on skills, outcomes, specific experiences. The employer will then go to your resume and look for these skills and these experiences that you've highlighted here. This is how you subconsciously get an employer to read your resume the way you want it to be read. You can see in this example how I've grouped together skills from classes, uh, from an internship. Uh, you can include jobs, you can include part-time jobs, you can include clubs and organizations or wherever else you have gained specific skills. But again, the focus is on the skills that I'm bringing for this position in which I'm applying for. I want to focus on, focus on what will make me successful what the employer is looking for for someone who wants to work in this position and I'm targeting my skills and my experiences forward for the job that I want. This is what I mean by speaking directly to an employer. They're looking for specific skills and experiences to do this job so you take your time in this section to focus on those skills and those experiences. The third paragraph highlights your personality. With all job types that are out there, they have specific personalities associated with them that the person will have in order to be successful. Think about it. A salesman is assertive, outgoing, persistent, right? Doesn't take no for an answer. An accountant is organized. They're detailed. They're accurate. They're good with numbers. In order to be successful in that role, they have the personality 
that makes them successful. So this paragraph here in your cover letter should focus on those traits and on those personal competencies that will make you successful in the role in which you are applying for. This is a big reason why employers actually conduct interviews. If it was just about skills and experiences that you have, you would be hired right off your resume but nobody gets hired off the resume, right? The interview is what gets you hired. So in your cover letter, you start to highlight specific things about you that's the full picture. So by this point in your cover letter, you've told them what you wanted in the first paragraph. You've told them about your specific skills and experiences for the position that you just said you wanted. And now this third paragraph completes the picture. This is who I am. This is why I will be successful in this particular role. You want to show them a bit about who you are and how it will make you a success in this position. So you see here in this example, I focused on outgoing personality, communication skills, hardworking, dealing with deadlines, things that someone would need if they were going to work in marketing as we've identified here. This next paragraph here will be additional information. Here you can really include anything else that you want or need to tell them, such as your willingness to travel or relocate for this position. For an internship, this could be where you include the number of hours per week that you are available. If you are changing careers, you can include a statement here that explains your career shift. And this is also a section that can answer the salary requirements question. The big things with salary requirements is number one, um, only if you're asked. Only put anything about your salary in the cover letter if it specifically asks you to include salary requirements. If it does ask, you want to use ranges, such, that, such as in this example where it says low 40s, uh, mid to upper 50s, lower to mids, uh, using those types of ranges. What you will need to do is get information from reputable sources like professional associations in your field to understand what the salary ranges are for your experience level and then you price yourself accordingly within this section. And so you may not need this particular paragraph if you don't have any additional information to add, but if you do, here's where it goes. And then finally, the last paragraph is your closing. Thank you for your time and consideration. And then you want to end strong what we, with what we call asking for the interview. What you want to make sure is that you end on a positive forward movement note. Okay, so instead of getting to the end and saying, I really hope you'll call me, or I wish to hear from you, be more assertive. I look forward to hearing from you soon. I will follow up with you next week in order to set up an interview. So you want to end on a very strong positive note. Your entire cover letter, your entire resume is about your confidence, your skills, and presenting yourself effectively for the position. So be sure that you end on a strong positive note as well. And then you'll see at the bottom we end with our sincerely, we skip a space, and then we put our name. And if we are physically handing this letter to someone in a hard copy, you will actually sign your cover letters as well. So overall, in looking at the format and the setup of a cover letter, you want to make sure that your cover letter matches your resume in the same font type, in the same font size. It should be neat, clean, and easy to read. You do not indent paragraphs on your cover letter, right? You indent English papers. You do not indent business letters. Use spacing in between your paragraphs to break up the blocks of text. And make sure that you are selling yourself for the position. If you use that format of your opening paragraph being your objective, the second paragraph focusing on your skills and your experiences for the job, your third paragraph focusing on your personality and competency traits for the position and then adding additional information and then closing strong. You've built a strong cover letter that markets your skills to the employer, talks to them about what you are bringing to the table, and then also connects to the resume and guides them through the entire process. 
So we hope this was helpful. Once you write your letter, be sure to upload it to the University of New Haven's Charger Link system for a review by our professional staff. You can also check out our resume writing tutorial located in our Virtual Career Center to help with that particular document. And good luck, and call on us for any additional help that you may need.